Cell phone radiation, it's an electromagnetic wave, but are cell phone waves hazardous to your health? Do they cause cancer? Let's find out. In the electromagnetic spectrum, cellular waves fall in the microwave region. Long wavelength, low energy. It's easy to measure the wavelength of a microwave with these heat-sensitive plastic pads. You see, the pad will change color the most where it's the hottest, where the waves are waving the most, the antinodes. Where the wave is not waving, there will be no color change at the nodes. The six centimeters we measured is not the full wavelength. That's only the distance from one hot spot to another. If you want the full wavelength, you have to go from hot to hot to hot, about twice that much, 12 centimeters. Now inside or on the back of the microwave is a label that you've probably never noticed. It says that the frequency is 2450 million hertz. The product of the wavelength and the frequency should be the speed of light constant C, and it is. 0.12 meters times 2450 million hertz is the speed of light constant 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. We know we did our measurement right. Cell phone signals are about the same wavelength as microwaves. So does that mean you're going to be cooked like one of those plastic pads? No. The energy of the microwave is coming in very high amplitude waves. A lot of them at once. Cell phones don't put out nearly the energy. Uh, oh. I'm getting a text, and the speakers are detecting it. It seems that the signal is highest when sending or receiving messages or making calls, but it's still not enough energy to cook you like a microwave oven. During World War II, soldiers noticed it was always warm when they stood near the microwave horn of their radar tower. This did not lead to cancer, rather cataracts, the clouding of the eye's lens. You see, the human body is good at dissipating the heat effects of low energy radiation by the moving of the blood. But there are no blood vessels going to and from the lens of the eye. As a result, the proteins in the lens got too hot and scrambled, becoming cloudy and causing partial, and in some cases, total blindness. So don't stick your head in microwaves. Oh wait, you do that every day. But a cell phone signal is not amplified high enough to cause cataracts. But can it cause cancer? What causes cancer anyways? The way it usually happens is ionizing radiation, which is x-rays or UV rays, damage the DNA, causing the cells to go haywire and reproduce out of control. The body often kills these cells with its own immune system, but not always. If the cells spread throughout the body, the patient is said to have cancer. The key term here is ionizing radiation, like the type from this radioactive source over here. I have here an electrically charged rod, and I'm putting some electrons on this zinc plate, which will deflect the needle on this scope. Even this dim UV light is able to get the electrons ionized off the zinc. UV light is an example of ionizing radiation. It has enough energy to eject electrons, even when it's not bright. You see, the light is coming in and hitting one electron at a time. It's called the photoelectric effect. You can think of light as traveling in packets of energy called photons, and these hit and ionize one electron at a time, but only if the light has enough energy. Red light can't do it, and neither can a microwave. To change DNA and cause cancer requires ionizing radiation, but cell phone signals are too long compared to the DNA molecular units. The last thing I want to tell you is that the cell phone is not even your largest dose of electromagnetic radiation in a day. You actually get more of it from your hair dryer and your electric razor. But the body can handle these and the cell phone's radiation. It doesn't add energy beyond the thermal energy that we exist with in our daily lives. Therefore, with no ionizing radiation, it doesn't cause cancer.